Hi there, my name is Vince from MyMateVince.com and in this video today we're going to be looking at the GPD Pockets. The GPD are the manufacturers and the name of the device is Pocket. You might remember these from another product that they've done called the GPD Win, which is this little Windows 10 gaming device. It's roughly around £376, it depends on what deal they've got going on at the moment, but if you have a look down in the description you will see I will link to Gearbest and that's the current price as of when I'm making this video. So. It isn't cheap, but at the same time, it really is a very, very, very nice product. So the main feature of this device for me is the size. So let's do a quick measurement of it, and then we'll do a visual comparison to some other devices. So the width of it is about 182 millimeters, so just over 18 centimeters. The height is around about 108 millimeters, and the depth is about, it's hard to gauge really, about 18 millimeters. So it's nice and small. So if we compare it to the netbooks from years ago, do you remember netbooks were all the crazy little computers? If you have a look, it really is tiny compared to that. And yet it's packed with so much more features. Now, in comparison to a standard size laptop, it's absolutely tiny. So if you look at it there, you can see the size difference. To the GPD win, it's actually quite a bit bigger. So it depends, I'm gonna do a full review on this. So I'm gonna talk about all the specs and then I'm gonna show you what I use it for later on in the video. But if you were to get this purely for gaming, then you would just go for the GPD win because it's already got the controls built into it and it is a smaller size. But this is for more computing tasks than the GPD win because the keyboard is so much more usable than these little keys down here. And if I was to compare it to an iPhone 7, you can see there, that's the size difference. So it really is a bit of a niche product because the reason netbooks kind of went out of fashion is because smartphones became so good. And the smartphone you will use when you're out and about and then you've got your laptop to use when you're at home or if you're bringing a dedicated laptop to somewhere in a rucksack. But for me it's ideal because when, for example, I'm away on holiday, I can check my eBay, I can check my YouTube, I can even upload videos on this because it's a full-on Windows 10 device. But yet I don't have to lug this big laptop round with me. So obviously if you're using it at home, you're not going to get this because you will just get a laptop. But if you do a lot of travelling, then this is ideal. So it comes with its own little box. You get yourself a fast charger with it, so if you have a look at the specs there, you can see it outputs 5 volts at 3 amps, 9 volts at 2.67 amps, and 12 volts at 2 amp, so it does support fast charging. It's a USB-C charger, and you also get a USB-C lead with it. It's running Windows 10 Home Edition. Here we've got the processor, that's the quad-core processor, that won't have any problem handling numerous tasks at once. 8 gigabytes of the RAM is a 64-bit operating system, so it's x64 based processor. So inside the GPD pocket, it's running an Intel Atom processor. So it's got baseline speeds of 1.6 gigahertz, and it's got turbo burst up to 2.56 gigahertz. So it had to go with an Intel Atom processor because it couldn't put an i3 or an i5 in there, purely because of the size, also the cooling requirements, and the battery life. So the Intel Atom processor handles Windows 10 absolutely fine. So this processor, which is the Intel Atom X7 Z8750, was launched at the beginning of 2016. So as far as Windows 10 is concerned, it's completely supported with the updates going forward. The good thing about this is it's got 8GB of RAM built into it, which is really good considering the small size and also the price. More expensive laptops often only have 4GB, so the fact that this has got 8GB of RAM is really great. It feels really well made and really good quality. It's made out of this, I'm not sure if it's magnesium or aluminium, but either way, it just feels lovely. It doesn't get full of fingerprints and it's got a lovely finish to it. And what I like about it, it hasn't got logos spread all over it. It's got a tiny little GPD logo at the back there. So when you're using this, nobody really knows what you've got. As you can see, it's really, really well made. It's got a lovely hinge on the back there, which is really solid. One thing I don't like about it is, when you're using it, you can only use it up to about that level without the bottom of the screen hitting the floor. So if you look now, as I start bringing it down further and further, it's gonna then scrape the bottom of the screen here. So it has got these little rubber feet, but 
right now the back rubber feet are on the ground but as I bring it down further at this level now the bottom of the screen is touching the ground and now it's actually lifting off the ground here so for example the back feet are now long, no longer making contact with the ground so that is a little bit of a shame because depending on the viewing angle you might want to view it like this and in which case then if you're resting it down on the surface you're going to end up scratching the bottom here so that is a a slight flaw with it but really that's the only flaw that I've got with this the rest of it is really really nice so if you have a look at that when it's closed it completely protects the screen and it just feels like a really quality it feels more like an Apple product rather than a GPD product having a quick look around the device we've got an inbuilt speaker around this area here so you can't see it but it resonates throughout the keyboard so the speakers built here We've got a little microphone built into it here. We've got an air intake fan here, so it has got active cooling, but it's nice and quiet. You can't hear it most of the time unless it's really working hard. And even then, it's not off-putting. And then we've got the exhaust here. Now, when it comes to ports, this hasn't got a huge amount of ports, but yet it's got the ports that you would need. So if you have a look here, we've got a Type-C port. We've got a micro HDMI port. We've got a 3.5 millimeter jack for your headphones, and we've also got a USB 3 port here. Great port here is a USB-C port. So this is gonna support 4K at 30 frames per second, or 1080p at 60 frames per second. It also allows you to charge up the device as well. Another port that I love is the micro HDMI, because it's just so easy to plug the cable into there, into your TV, and then just mirror the image up there, or use the extended desktop so you can be doing work on here and then you can have for example Netflix running on the extended desktop on your TV. I personally use this USB port here to connect an Ethernet adapter into it so I can have a wired internet connection because we haven't got any RJ45 ports on this one here. Now as far as Wi-Fi is concerned, it has exactly what you would expect it to have. So it's got A, A, C, B, G, N, it's 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz. So that's handy as well, the fact that it's got the 5 gigahertz channel so it's gonna be less crowded than a lot of laptops that only use the 2.4 gigahertz channel. So one of the most striking things about the GPD Pocket is the beautiful display. So it's a seven inch display, it's 1900 by 1200, which is really good because the GPD win from memory was only up to 720. So here you've got a full 1080p without any problems. It's got a layer of Corning Gorilla Glass 3 on it and it's got a 16 by 10 aspect. It's an IPS technology. So again, that's good on a device so cheap. And if you have a look, it's got a good viewing angle. So even at that angle there, obviously you're getting all the reflections from my room here, but even at that angle there, you can still see the screen. So the viewing angles are really good on this. So the screen itself has lovely colors. It's all nice and crisp and clear, but because it's a Windows 10 device running on something so small, you'll find that because you normally use it at quite a distance, you know, because you normally have it down and you're typing like this, you use it a lot further away than when you're using your smartphone. You tend to hold your smartphone a lot closer to your face. So you will find that you still find it hard to see certain text just because of the distances involved because everything is so small. And this is a touch screen, but again, because it's Windows 10, it's fine for doing the major icons and the Windows key and searching and pressing back and you can also do an on-screen keyboard if you wish what you'll find is you will still be using the nub down here a lot because using your finger isn't really accurate when it comes to using the very small icons so if you've got a whole list of icons to do then you will find it hard to use your finger to select something so it's fine the touch screen is fine for just general browsing and stuff like that but you will find that you will use the little track point down here a lot more than the touch screen. Also, when you use a touch screen, you're gonna get more and more fingerprints on the screen, so that can be irritating. So this screen packs in 323 pixels per inch, so it's got 323 PPI, so it's got a retina level display. For storage, it's got 128 gigabytes of storage, and that's EMMC storage. And like I mentioned earlier, it's got eight gigabytes of RAM, that's DDR3. Now, as far as the keyboard's concerned, there's been a bit of criticism over it, but personally, I like it. It does take a little bit of getting used to, and it depends on how used to typing you are. If you're one of these people that can type X amount of words per minute, then 
you'll probably find you will struggle a bit on this. But if you're like me and you just, just type with one or two fingers, then this will take no time at all to get used to it. My only criticism, but this will vary for different people, is for example, you've got the backspace here and the delete here. Personally, I would rather it the other way around because I use the backspace a lot more than the delete key. So this is the bigger one, this is a smaller one. I would have swapped it round. But then again, other people would prefer it the way it is here. So that would just depend. Another thing that takes a bit of getting used to is this little blue nub here, the thing that moves the mouse around the screen. So basically, if I move it just very lightly, it only moves a small bit. If I move it harder, it moves quicker. But there's quite a lot of resistance on it, so it takes a little bit of getting used to, and it's quite slow to move around the screen. What I've seen another person do is remove this and replace it with a red one of these that I think has a little bit more travel up and then it makes it a lot easier to move around so I might well look into that because it's so easy to replace. Now the space bar is split in two over here. I'm not sure if you're supposed to use it with one finger on here and then left click and right click like so but personally I still just use it like this and then I use left click and right click. This takes a little bit of getting used to but I haven't got a problem with the keyboard. I think it feels really nice. The travel seems to be about over one millimeter for each of the keys. I think they feel nice and you can't expect it to be as good as a full-size keyboard because it's not a full-size keyboard, it's small, so there always has to be compromise. But if you were to compare this to the GPD Win that came before it, this keyboard now feels horrible compared to that. So although the keyboard does work fine, you can't really type on this at all, while with this you can type completely fine. So yes, obviously if you were doing a 20,000 word essay, you wouldn't want to be doing it on this keyboard here. But I would say for 90% of people, for light computing uses, this works absolutely fine. So you've got all your dedicated keys on here. You've got your Windows key, you've got your Control, you've got your Alt, you've got your Delete up here, you've got a Power button, you've got your volume sound up here and you've also got your function key to do things like the brightness so all the keys are there that you would expect them to be you've got your print screen so really you're not looking for any keys any more than you would do on a normal keyboard now what i would say is if you're using this for gaming you might struggle if you're using the keys so for me it's not a problem because i just connect up my controllers via bluetooth or you can use a wired controller via the usb but if you're a keyboard gamer then if you have a look the keys are really offset here so if you look at the wsad can you see how hard that is going to be to use while on a normal keyboard they're only slightly offset so you can comfortably have your hands there and then you can move up and down but because it doesn't look like it's much more offset, but it is. It makes it actually really uncomfortable to use because the finger doesn't feel natural when it goes up to the W over there. So just bear that in mind. For me, it's not a problem because I like to connect up the controllers to it anyway. The battery in it is a LiPo battery. It's 7,000 milliamp hours. And you'll be looking, although it's got an estimated of use of 12 hours, realistically, you're going to be looking at about 6 to 8 hours. So if I hover down the battery now, I've got 8 hours, 21 minutes remaining. But from the use I get out of it, I don't get that long. But obviously it depends on what you're going to be using it for. But still, six to eight hours is plenty long enough. The weight of it is 40 and 80 grams. Right, it's got a real tech stereo speaker built into it, but it is only a single speaker. Sound is actually surprisingly good, so you won't really find you have a problem with the sound. It goes loud enough for what you would need. If you're on a busy aeroplane or a particularly noisy train or something, you are going to struggle a bit, but you've got phone jack port there to plug in your headphones to it anyway. Really into your audio, remember you can connect up a separate Bluetooth speaker to it anyway. The Bluetooth in this is to 4.1. Still, if you're wanting to connect up all your Bluetooth speakers, headphones, Bluetooth controllers or any other Bluetooth device. Heat wise when you're using it is more than comfortable. You will find that it will warm up here by the exhaust fan in this corner here but it's not going to be getting as hot as a full size laptop but it will be getting hotter than a smartphone. The heat wise it's not a problem. The sound wise from the fan is not a problem. So day to day computing tasks like computing for 90% of the people out there, this will work absolutely fine. Obviously, you're not going to be playing the latest games on it because it's not going to be good enough for something like that. But for an everyday little laptop, this is perfect. What I think is ideal for is, let's say if you're a student and you're just living in 
halls of residence, so you've got everything just in one room. Rather than having to have a laptop and a PC in your room, you can just have your TV, which I presume you're probably gonna have a TV anyway, and then you can just use this to connect up to your TV with an external keyboard and possibly an external mouse if you prefer that, and then you can use it as a full-size desktop, and then when you wanna to go to your lectures and stuff like that, you can just take it all out and you bring this away with you. Again, it's tiny, you don't have to carry a huge, heavy laptop around with you. Of course it's much bigger than the phone, but it's so much more usable than a phone. You can get so much more work done on this than if you're relying on your mobile phone. So now I'm going to show you the things that I like to do with it. 